Hello everyone. Welcome to the Ziljin India page and uh, welcome to the 15th episode of the Ziljin Talk. We are almost towards the end of the season 1. Uh thank you everyone for all the love and support you guys have showed to this talk show. Uh I've had a great time, you know, uh talking to so many amazing drummers from all across the globe and uh, today though as you know we have this incredible drummer from mumbai who's been a part of various projects since the last 20 years uh and that in different genres of music uh he has performed with artists like kk sachin jigar vishal shekar lucky ali shan clinton sereo and many more he's also part of the bombay black uh the band bombay black which recently released an album called the snow white and the seven bungalows uh he's a he has played drums in several films like kahona pyar hai jankar beats laksh chameli jhoom barabar jhoom uh so without any further ado i'm going to try to invite him today uh, unfortunately our chat on saturday could not be completed due to network issues and i really hope today uh, you know the net behaves uh, itself and uh, i'm able to have a good chat with him let's see if he's here Hello everyone and thanks for joining in. Uh and I'm just going to see if he's here and I think he is. Let's welcome Lindsay DeMello. Mr. Lindsay, welcome back on the show. Oh, you man, it's uh, good to see you without any pixels today. Man, it's 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 looking great. Touch wood. This uh, is keeping fingers yeah. crossed. No, I've I've shut I've shut all my other devices as well because like since I'm new to this, basically the last time that was could have probably been the problem. Right. Because right. Uh, in this lockdown period, everybody is just hooked onto their gadgets. So basically. Correct. 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 Everybody's <laughs> Netflixing throughout. Like so. Absolutely. It's, exactly. It's, uh, but great to see you, yeah. brother, again. And uh, yeah, thank bro, you so likewise, much for man. joining in. I've worn my drum T-shirt for you guys. Ah, it's got like. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that looks like a Simon Phillips kit, bro. Yeah, it's a Simon Phillips with Terry Bozzi or the whole gang. Yeah. <laughs> too How good, you been, man? Good, good man. Uh, just uh, surviving in these uh, tough times, but oh, uh, it's yeah. been good. I've been taking it into a, a little positive way and trying to do uh, various stuff around the whole music scene whether it's education or whether it's uh, you know uh, recording from my studio to collaborations and stuff so tell us what's happening with you and uh, you know how have you been uh, you know taking into this whole the last four months being with you uh it's been like uh, i guess each one of us has been hit in our own way yes. uh, so i'm just going to keep this down like this i hope it doesn't bother you that's perfect uh, so it's hands free basically uh yeah the initial part of the lockdown i got hit with like uh, domestic issues like you know no maids and blah 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 taking care of my dad who's Same like board. old and stuff like that so uh, and plus drum kit was not in not in my place my drum kit at my dad's place which is like 4 kilometers away from here so in the first two months i didn't really get to play much i probably went there once and saw it and i was like wow how are you guys <laughs> and then uh the headspace also was not to just go and bang you know like so right. but now in the last few months like since the lockdowns kind of eased out a bit i've been going there and just uh, actually just putting on the metronome and just playing that's all i've been doing so how and does it feel that, actually think... because you know i i don't think so even for you as a musician you have taken uh, such a big break ever in your life never. of not never traveling do. of not gigging How did it feel yeah. to go back to the kit and you know uh, you know play again after like a couple of months It felt quite bad actually bro <laughs> because I was like <laughs> needless to say like I was rusty like crazy True. and uh, you know the hands and limbs were not like it was there in the head but the execution wasn't coming out okay. like obviously since you've not played drums for so long there's so much of information in your head wanting to come out but it took a little while to come out so I said you know let me just anyways the reset button is on so Let me reset, and I actually started at like some fifty-five BPM, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like a full balance feel is happening at huh, this time. Full, full, full on, full on, bro. Like, and of course, then I got tired of it and started making fifty-five into double tempo, which is like right. drum and bass has to flow out of me eventually. Absolutely, you know? so, absolutely. So yeah, it's been fun, man. It's been fun. Apart from that, I've been doing a lot of other things. I've been. Uh, 
just doing a little bit of photography i've been uh, working uh, on video editing and stuff like that cuz i have uh, since there was no drum kit i was just basically sitting on the computer and uh, writing the new dcf album so nice yeah that's on yeah tell us about Actually. photography bro like you know i i, I saw your instagram <laughs> profile and it's like, it's got like pictures oh. from like bhutan <laughs> nepal so when did that start man the... i've always been like uh, like so here's the story it was if i wasn't a drummer i'd probably be a filmmaker or a photographer more likely nice. a photographer but the but the uh, i mean both these two professions photography and drumming like are fairly expensive like yes. you know like a nice a good a good swanky kit is will cost you a few lakhs and a good uh, camera as well will camera. cost you a few lakhs so uh, i mean music was obviously a little more uh, it was more 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 it was more my thing you know but i have always had a love for photography and uh, bhutan actually I, i was in bhutan for a month with uh, a drummer friend of mine who used to come to me for lessons and then he moved away to italy and he became a photographer and nice. he was going to bhutan and he, and he just needed like somebody to like he said i don't want to like pay for like an assistant assistant you're a right. buddy and i i know you and i know you like photography so that was like a one month crash course in photography for me man it was crazy like i was in bhutan for a month waking up every day and just planning a shot this guy was doing his grant he was uh, studying in the state so he was doing architectural photography okay so i learned learned a lot in that month about photography and just cameras and stuff like that so yeah i mean i've been a a closet uh, photographer and uh, so you so usually carry a camera when you go for like general tours and stuff i used to i used to but now just phone man now it's just the phone right like even this this started out like uh, in the morning i would wake up i'm sh- i'm sure like everybody one thing that all of us have taken from the lockdown is i'm sure everybody can finally cook now cook and clean <laughs> dishes <laughs> you know yeah. well, like so i would only make eggs and i love like putting putting together salads and stuff like that but now it was like i had to start making food which is like dal and stuff like that so some dal requires soaking o- overnight yes and uh, basically so i would, do, I would <laughs> <laughs> I would do that in the morning. I would do that, and in the morning I'd wake up and come and see all this dal, which is like, uh, you know, obviously uh, soaked up and it's grown bigger. And the my kitchen faces the east, yeah. so the sunlight in the morning was just amazing. Like this dal was like, it didn't look like this last night. It looks amazing <laughs> right now. Yeah. So, so I would basically just take my camera and just zoom into it, and uh, I would just get. some amazing shots and i thought like chalo yeah. just in terms of like a consistency we doing nothing so in the lockdown anyways so just as an exercise to put out a picture every day i started something called textures in lockdown yes and uh, yeah so that's that's where it came out from and i would just be doing that now of course i'm slackening um, because i'm i'm playing music now I'm back, back to, to the kid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so but yeah it's fun man it's fun even like video editing i've been working on the software called adobe premiere Yes, and uh, I love, I love, I love editing. Like period, even when I'm sitting on Cubase, I I enjoy the process of editing. All right. And this is a uh, this is editing film. The only difficulty is that the the size is a lot bigger, and you know you need a. I need to get a new computer basically. Right, right. <laughs> it's doing doing yeah, Cubase well, I, and Premiere. Yeah, it's a great software though. I tried it. Uh, I tried my hands on it in Nam. I I did a small course hmm. uh, like just about a day at Nam. Uh, you know, oh, nice. learning this Adobe Premiere it was pretty cool, and it's you know, yeah, I got man. inspired by so, Mike Johnston. He he uses this one, uh, the software for all his videos, and they they look great, man. You know, and I thought it's yeah. high time that we have to also start learning these things in the d- digital space now. Nope. We can't be dependent on the editors and stuff now. So it's now it's great. Now it's like everything that. is it's do it yourself. Everything yes. you got to do everything yourself. Like I mean, like of course you have friends and people who can like you know guide you and assist you. Right. And even like all I mean tutorials I've just been watching on YouTube and you know whenever I'm stuck I'll just go to YouTube and okay how to do this how to add text how to do that it's, right. it's kind of sorts it out. And it's a similar I mean if you do if you do music production and you're already familiar with the concept of music editing I mean it's a similar. it's a similar fundamentals it's just a, you just need to learn the software basically right and like right. i said i'm i'm a sucker i'm a sucker for editing so i love it correct so, correct yeah so man. uh so tell us because we are here on the ziljin india page uh, when yeah. did your journey started with ziljin and you know what were your first set of uh, symbols that you bought from them uh so back in the day there was uh, only bhargavas and uh, a sardar flute i don't think sardar flute would like to stock these symbols and right. bhargava actually once uh, got a bunch of symbols and 
I happened to be there when they, I think, just got it. And uh, I was playing rock music then, and I was kind of fascinated with splashes. Right. So they had a, they had this they had this six six inch splash, which I was like, yeah, I want that. Then they had the Zill Bell. I was like, yeah, yes. I want this also. And they had another inverted China mini kind of thing. I said, I want that also. And I, and uh, yeah, that's when it started. Uh, apart from that, I had a couple of Paistes, and I had some uh, some Sabians as well. Uh, but like I said, I've always had a soft corner for Zildjian because, you know. I mean, all all these guys make great symbols. Like it's and it's a personal choice. It's not yes. what's good and bad. And like you know, it's not like I'm going to diss your stuff and you're going to diss my stuff. It's a personal right. choice. So uh, I think Zildjian has like an amazing range. You know, especially now with the with the with the dries and the stacks and stuff like that. Uh, I've always been uh, into the into the K's and the A's. Uh, in fact, one of my first rides that I picked up from Vancouver was a. Uh, the a a ping ride yeah. which i think trilok trilok used to use a, a bit yes. you know yes. and uh, i mean so i was like well, i need to get my hands on this and actually uh, they didn't have zildjian hats because i want they, they i wanted like a 13 you know they were doing these 13 and a quarter pocket hats yeah uh, yeah so uh, uh, zildjian didn't have that when i was in vancouver and sabian had it so i just picked it up for the size and i was using that for the longest time that was like my hats and my ride go to and uh, yeah i've always had a soft corner for zildjian and uh, then i kind of got roped in by, uh, by i think keshav and the futaros people during yes. the blue frog era and they were like man you have to jump on to zildjian so i was like yeah sure man i'd love to it's like uh, nice. and since then it's i think it's been i don't know maybe 7 years or 7 8 6 i don't know i mean i remember right. getting that the 5 year anniversary card which was like wow the certificate yeah they, yeah they they do this as well that's amazing right and then of course going to the fact going to the factory in novel boston that was like that was like a, i didn't expect it like i mean sarah and emily and all were like so chill and i think sarah also had a kid that a baby at that time so we were also having drum talks and baby talks and parental <laughs> talks you know? so nice. it was a really nice day it was, it was cool nice. yeah man so what are the stuff that you picked up from the factory right now the the stuff that you're playing are are they all hand picked or some of the stuff were was ship, shipped to you and you no know? i didn't i didn't actually i think we were touring for a bit so i couldn't you know have any more luggage put on to my right. i think we i think i was touring with uh, i think i think it was with mohit mohit chawn right. and we were on like a 30 day tour or something and that boston was uh, I actually had time there. We lived in a really nice hotel, which was apparently haunted, and had some insane stories. Wow! And uh, the next day, the next day, I just went to Norwell, and I spent the whole day there. And I just took a, a cab right from Norwell straight to the airport, and we moved to another city. So, like, it was it was it was pretty cool. So I didn't get to actually pick any symbols from there. Uh, all the symbols that I've been using are just all you know ordered, like when we get our how we get our pack yes. every year. Or whatever. Yes. So yes. I didn't really get anything from there. Nice. So, uh, also when your setup comes to like the the whole Bollywood stuff that you do with Sachin Jigar and uh, you know KK and your own setup with your band, what is the difference of symbols that you're using in these uh, two different genres that you're playing right now? Uh, for the Bollywood stuff, I think it's more kind of bright symbols. Like uh, for the hats, I use the uh, once again the thirteen and a quarter, the yes. hybrids for the longest time, and then. Uh, I got the SFX. I remember you telling me to check out the SFX, and I finally yeah. got it. And I, I, but that works fine in the DCF setup. Yeah. I don't think uh, I don't think it'll cut the Bollywood scene because it's very trashy. And right. in fact, uh, I won't na- I won't name the artist, but like I was actually flying. I did a DCF gig somewhere, and I came to do this this particular gig, <laughs> right. and I couldn't carry like you know I couldn't carry like two sets of symbols like. Right. So I came and and he was like. Uh, man, your symbols are your hats are sounding a little different today. <laughs> I said, yeah, bro. <laughs> I said, yeah, bro. I've come that's from a really cool, actually. Got that. that's, that's really cool, yeah. though. Yeah, you got that. Like, uh, but he did. Uh, he did like the the crashes, the special dry crashes. He liked, yes. but he didn't like the hats. Like so. Right. So yeah, I mean, uh, so and and plus the SFX is just the top, right? So I had to get a bottom, which is a fourteen, and I had thirteen, so I couldn't match it. So I I remember checking out these new beat hats, and I quite like them. Yes. So now, uh, basically, it's the thirteen hybrids and the fourteen new beat hats that I use for the Bollywood setups. For DCF, it's always experimenting. I go with the SFX hats with the new beat down. Yes. Then I have uh, all the dry ride. I have the dark crash. Uh, then I have uh, 
the the one with the holes which is the special dry trash yeah, yeah? trash crash trash crash uh, yeah. abir actually abir i've been waiting to get the the china but it's been in, it's been out of stock for a while apparently the dry china so right that, yeah yeah with the yeah. holes yeah sounds uh, brilliant yeah. correct yeah i know you have it yeah, yeah. so uh, and apart from that in terms of crashes like there's the k has a session crash which was like steve gads thing which is a go to yes. and there's the a fast crash which is a go to uh, then the sfx are pretty all right uh but yeah i kind of try to avoid uh, using the dark symbols for bollywood because it kind of i don't think it suits that sound unless right. it's like something different you know yeah. so and for dcf like it's all wash, a... like you know pretty much like you know we don't require that wash uh, especially in the pop Correct. space we want it to like Correct. just play and kind of get out of the way right you know uh, within a second so that's Correct. something that is there uh Correct. what 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 was the setup you used for coke studio man for madari <laughs> Madari was, uh, I think I was still using Sabians then, bro. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because uh, that, that was the first season for me. Oh, that was 2013, uh, if I'm not wrong. The the season. Yeah. That so they. So, so then after that, the next season that I played, I were all shiny Sabians. Okay. So, okay. But this one was. Uh, That's why it didn't sound that, that great, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, in fact I, i i was i was playing the only zilgin i was playing was that ping ride that i was talking about and right. i still had the same same sabian 13 and a quarter hats right. and i had these beautiful uh, handmade symbols from turkey right which were just uh, fabulous like yeah. i mean these handmade symbols that you that you score in turkey are just all of them sound so good like yes they're just amazing like so yeah i was using some of that as well and uh, and i had a small inverted china which was also another sabian Hmm. and uh, then i have this cindy blackman uh, istanbul or something like that so okay yeah. nice so the next time was basically all the shiny zilgins basically right. that was mainly a lot of hybrids mainly a lot of hybrids and uh, the session crash and the a fast crash that was my first consignment now thanks to zilgin like i have i'm sure we all have lots of yes, back home a good range of some stuff, of them yeah. some of them that we're not even using they're just like lying there you know so right yeah. Cool yeah, scene man. Totally uh, grateful to Zilgin. Right. So we've got some questions coming in. I'm going to actually take them or uh, take them at the end of the session. Sure, man. Uh, Yo, guys, up. what's up? Uh, how are you all, man? I hope all of you all are well. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Like, I mean, yeah. it is uh, very friend, seldom that. We have a friend, Naveen Deshpande, who's joined our chat as well. <laughs> hey, hi, Naveen. Paplash. Paplash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's there. <laughs> how are you, Babu? Nice, nice. So uh let's say let's go back and uh, when did the whole drumming scene start for you and if you can talk about your earlier influences uh and uh, who were your earlier teachers who you, when you started learning Well uh, in terms of teachers unfortunately or fortunately I've not had a teacher it's all been pretty much self taught and by wow. ear and god god has given me some talent to take forward so like all of us we like in the first grade I started banging on pots and pans and you know like I would have all the papad boxes nicely aligned like a drum kit and i would take some thali which was my symbol and blah 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 then i went to like i used to go to a lot of rock concerts and uh, one of the drummers actually threw sticks and i got it so i had one drum stick and uh, the other one was not a drum stick right. and uh, where were these rock of... concerts at rang bhavan yeah Or... absolutely rang bhavan man. yeah rang bhavan rang bhavan and there was another venue which is now uh, rang rang mandir which is now like a this an auditorium where uh, chikoria performed oh in bandra in bandra yeah yeah yes yeah. yes it, yes, it was it was a, a place new, called rang mandir it's a new auditorium really nice auditorium it's a new auditorium. so uh, there was a there was like an amphitheater called rang mandir there yes uh, and there used to be a lot of rock shows there as well so we used to go and check it out but what started the drumming thing was uh, so my dad used to work uh, uh we worked for tatas which basically shared the building with sterling cinemas back then i don't know if people even know sterling cinema right. <laughs> but uh, so uh, they used to have these uh, live concerts of uh, certain artists like so they had a, a like a live concert of this guy called elvis presley uh and my parents were big fans of him and i mean he was big at that point in the 70s yeah. and 80s and i go for this gig uh, And it's a live concert, and I see the drummer with like a double bass drum kit and a big ass kit, man. And I was like, "Whoa, what is this? I want that. I want that." Right. Mujhe wohi chahiye. So since then, the the bug was set. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, and uh, as I progressed, like I used to play on my, you know, made drum kit with, you know, all these plastic boxes, and 
eventually my parents uh, decided okay fine this guy needs a drum kit and i got my right. first bcm drum kit from sardar flute which i paid like some 7 grand or something wow. <laughs> it was a very flimsy drum it was a very flimsy drum kit like uh like i literally had to put some something behind the kick drum because every time i kicked it it would go ahead go ahead <laughs> yeah, yeah don't do that so like your right leg your right leg is here and your left leg is here only so you're doing some acrobatics and playing drums like <laughs> bizarre dude <laughs> So yeah, that's how. That's so basically, Elvis is drummer. His name, I think, was Ronnie Tight. I think that kind of started it for me. Okay. And then uh, there was tons of music in my like. My parents were like big music enthusi- enthusiasts. My brother was very instrumental in uh, ex- influencing me to influencing me to a lot of different kind of music, like the eighties uh, stuff. You know, the the eighties pop from Aha to Duran Duran and all that, and right. and straight up heavy metal and rock. So like. uh yeah that's how i started basically so one side i was like a full rocker and the other side i was like disco and pop and whatever basically nice yeah. nice right? and uh, there was no bollywood then it was only doordarshan and hindi film music so. correct, correct correct yeah so yeah so, yeah, man, so, so when did it. you start actually like practicing like rudimental like? stuff and like when did all that happen then i think when i was 16 uh, when i got my drum kit i actually went for one lesson like one lesson hmm. uh, to this drummer called Kalyan Pathak in oh, a yes, studio Oh yes Kalyan Bombo Pathak who stays in Chicago yeah, very yeah. dear friend yeah Chicago yeah so uh, basically uh, all these guys the rock machine boys and all they used to all yes. be doing advertising at music room back then and i don't re- quite remember where i met Kalyan Pathak but i was like you know can i come for a lesson he's like yeah sure come and uh, he basically showed me the paradiddles that's all he did and then uh, I don't know. I don't know why. Oh, it didn't kind of work out, and uh, uh, I don't. I didn't continue the lessons, and I just started playing. Like you know, I just started literally sitting down at home, and like my routine was from like say maybe nine thirty to about one in the afternoon. Then we take a little break, and then again it would be from like three or six, and that was the routine every day. Nobody told me how to do this. I just did it out of show will basically. <laughs> Now of course we don't do these things anymore because <laughs> we right. don't have that much time. But right. yeah, that's that's what that's that's all I did, man. There was a guitar player, guitar player friend of mine, Sidhu Achrekar, who uh, people might know him from Color Blind. We used to have a band called Modus Operandi, and uh, we used to play like every day, every day, regardless, gigs right. and all. There were no gigs. We were just playing basically. Play. So yeah, I think that's where all the the shedding kind of you know the practice uh, started. Yeah. So for you, I think it's it was pretty much learning on the job. If I must say, like you know, absolutely, it was like you started yeah. gigging and you were like learning while you were gigging actually. So, ah uh, well, uh, no, I was actually uh, I started playing like I said in a rock band. So right. back then there was there was no YouTube and stuff. So if you have to figure out a song, basically, you put on your headphones, sit make you sit on your drum kit, rewind, stop, rewind, mm. stop, rewind, right. stop. You know that it's like so that's that's how I I remember doing that to this. Uh, A very famous Rush song called Y Y Z. Yes. I don't know if you've heard that song. It's yeah, pretty yeah, intense. Yeah. Like it's it's in seven and there's a lot of syncopation. Right. It took me a week to like you know get that song down, but once I actually got it down, I was like, wow, it was like a sense of achievement, you know. Right. So right. yeah, I think that's that's where it started. Like and then later on, like music production happened, and you know, I mean, like I did advertising for a bit. I did like a course in video and film production. So nice. Yeah, I was always, but. uh yeah and i was just i never thought i would be like you know i would play like bollywood and i thought i'd be playing my own music like because right. you know, i was in a rock band and then i think in 96 i met uh, this guy called dinsha who was uh, who's like a fusion guy in the band uh, yeah so uh, and i met lucky ali the same year so it was basically it opened up the doors to like right acha there's lots more to only saying i'm going to play in one band and, you know. <laughs> okay, and of course okay. like I, i i was i was i was when i met din i was playing like pantera and like we were playing really hard stuff and then suddenly din throws like a 7 and a half and a 13 and all this shit i was like what is this why are we playing in all these odd time signatures right. i mean can't you just play it in an 8 like so yeah but so in the, in those two years i i mean that was that was like a lot of uh, Uh, a different learning curve for me. I, I used to actually go for a lot of classical concerts, and I used to trip a lot on this tabla player called Anindo Chatterjee. Yeah, yes, Anindo Chatterjee yes, both. from Cal. Yeah. So I would re- I would religiously go to classical concerts and just sit and you know watch Zakir and whoever. Like it was I I kind of did that study for a bit. Like so, yeah, nice. it was it was the process of you know evolving. Yeah. 
Amazing. So bef- before Lucky Ali, what were the bands that you were you were, you have been part of in the in the nineties? I was playing with these rock bands. So my first band was a band called Vichamo. Right. Uh, which used to pretty much play heavy metal like Iron Maiden and all that stuff. Wow. Uh, it had it had Paresh on guitar. It had this other guitar player called Ravi Iyer. It had yes. JD on bass, and it had uh, this singer called Rahul Cardoza. Okay. And I was, I think, I was sixteen then. Like so, you know, it was. And then after that, we kind of graduated from that to slightly more technical rock music, which was with Siddharth Achrekar, this friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, so we started playing like Mr. Big and Extreme and Rush and Van Halen, a little more challenging, challenging music. Right. Uh, it had Tik Tiku once again. It had JD on bass once again, and it had Naresh on vocals. Naresh used to sing then. Now he yes, plays bass with Kerala, but he used to sing then. Right. Uh, then after that, I was in a band with uh, called Spice Tribe once again with Paresh, Naresh, and Suraj. I don't know if you know Suraj Jagan. He's a Suraj singer. Jagan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I played on his one of his Suraj. albums uh, back in the day with Chandresh and <laughs> Dream Out Loud. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, even Dream Out Loud I played with for a bit. Yeah. Uh, so it was Spice Tribe before that. In fact, Din 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 Shah spotted us at Rang Bhavan. He saw us performing at Rang Bhavan, okay. and he gave us a call the next day and said, "Hey man, uh, I think you guys have some talent, and I have this gig uh, at the Thailand Jazz Festival. Would wow. you guys want to come for it? Like so, we were like, yeah, sure, why not? But he was like, uh, we need to rehearse for like two months <laughs> because oh. we were obviously." obviously jumping different styles you know right. like from playing era to like suddenly like you know song for amba which was in seven and a half and stuff like that it was a different right. it was a different uh, canvas it was quite a different canvas for me right 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 so uh, so from there it basically went to lucky ali and then fr- from pretty much lucky like the whole pop and the bollywood scene started for you right well yeah it actually started with uh, while i was doing lucky i was also playing with shan sagrika for a bit uh we used to do a lot of channel v stuff like some basic things right. uh then after lucky ali uh i've always tried to maintain uh, uh like apart from the commercial work also do something that you like to do like how i mean i know you do the same with uh, yes. darshan doshi collective and right now i'm doing it with uh, dcf dcf uh so so basically back then we've kind of formed a funk band uh which was called gg's funkadelic arcade Okay. and we then from from rock we basically evolved to playing you know jamero kwai and brand new heavies and incognito and nice. basically got into the whole acid jazz uh, funk hip hop kind of zone right. and that was fun so we did that uh, then uh, bombay black happened soon after that uh, and uh, then after that uh, what what was what else was i doing Uh, I did Groove Supper with uh, some friends of mine, Tala and Dwight and Binay and stuff right. like that. Right. Tell us about Bombay great... Black because you spoke about Bombay Black. How was that experience? And if you can, uh, you know, obviously, uh, yeah, the, sure. You were the part of the band and the whole uh, gigging experience with them. So basically, Bombay Black was. Uh, we are kind of all fortunate to be from Bombay, hence Bombay Black. Right. Uh, <laughs> and we just kind of, uh, and I mean. Bombay Black means something, but I'm not going to say it on on, on this show. Right. I mean, everybody who knows it, yeah, that's what Got it that. is basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we were all we were just a bunch of friends who used to just hang out, you know, day in day out. When I mean friends, it was like Paresh, Naresh, JD, uh, Abhijit, Nalani, uh, Randolph. Uh, who else? I'm sure I'm missing a Samrat. So basically, we were a bunch of friends who just hung out and. we started writing music like you know and each one of us was writing our own music on uh, like very small like this roland vs80 and we basically right. started getting into composition so we there was a situation and jd's brother said like hey man you know like uh, i have this deal where you know i'm trying to push for some music from bombay and uh, you know can you send me some music so and he, all of us like naresh paresh had one track me and jd had a track right. somebody else samrat had a track so we basically in short compiled all our music together we called it bombay black and uh, we were just basically a bunch of friends who used to just hang out and jam every day you know it just so right. happened to be that all of us were musicians and uh, we basically uh, put out the cd we put out one cd and then there was uh, the great indian rock gir yes. which amit saigal used to run yes so it was a it was a competition where the band that kind of won the competition would get to go to uh, play a gig in LA right. and it was a very funny it was a very funny gig because uh, we were playing we were 10 of us 
so that's basically Kurt from the drumming department. That's Kurt, T two, and myself. Uh, so we just keep switching between drums, percussions, and whatever. Uh, then wow. guitar so players. Three drummers on stage. You're saying? Like no, not like percussion. Kit. Right. Yeah, percussion. Yeah. Stuff. So right. yeah, yeah. Uh, one kit and two percussions or whatever. Nice. Then guitar players. There were lots of guitar players. There was Paresh. There was uh, Randolph. There was uh, Tiku. Three guitar players. Right. Uh, then on samples there was Abhi. Abhi ji was playing keys and Samrat was there. He was uh, you know running samples and stuff. Right. And this was like it was. It's called the Great Indian Rock. So and we actually started uh, you know playing some drum and bass and stuff. There I remember this one. Uh, uh this one drum and bass track i think somebody had sampled a, a dennis mm. chambers group which was pretty crazy uh so anyways we were doing very different material and people were right. like, some people got it some people didn't some people were like man these guys are playing with recorded music you know which uh, is basically now today everybody plays with recorded everybody music everybody does that <laughs> so it just though how you do it like whether you choose to do it with stems whether you choose to do it with the entire track or whatever right So we were actually cut, like it was quite funny. I remember people throwing you know plastic bottles at us on stage, and even I was really? taking a bottle and throwing it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it became wow. like a fun thing here. And uh, to I think our surprise, we won that competition. <laughs> so we went to LA. We nice. went to LA and we played two like really big gigs. We played a, f- a festival called the Inland Invasion, which had like a lot of like the bands, then System of a Down, Incubus. Puddle of Mud and some really crazy bands nice. playing. So, so we did that. And Amit Segal, I don't know how he managed to do this. A day before, at the same venue, Aerosmith was performing, and he got us to play on that gig as well. So we did two gigs back to back at the same uh, venue. Wow! Uh, I was like, wow. I mean, I, I don't know how he managed to get the Aerosmith gig, but it was quite amazing, right? Okay. So yeah, that was. In terms of the indie scene, I think that was the biggest scene. Big, and I remember we were in the newspaper like almost every day. you know because we were the band that was going abroad and i think initially uh they were not sure who who which big artist we were going to play with initially it was like the red hot chili peppers it was this that blah 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 but then eventually it turned out to be aerosmith so it's pretty cool man it was like nice. in fact that was quite that was quite a insane year because this happened in uh, the same time that september 11th happened basically oh 2001 so I, i was in yeah right. yeah i was in la for like a, for for a good month Right. And then September 11th happened. My friend woke me up, and he was showing me all these images of planes crashing on the building. And I'm, it it was very surreal. I didn't buy it. I thought it was like some some like you know graphics and some like stuff. Right, then, right, right. So then then after that, we all had to like kind of basically catch the next flight out, basically. Got it. So yeah, it was quite it was quite a quite a quite a trip. Right. So which what was your first Bollywood setup that you you performed with? Bollywood, huh? I think my biggest uh, Bollywood gig was uh, I did like this unforgettable tour with Vishal Shekhar and Vishal Shekhar. we were backing up yeah we were we were basically backing up uh, Mr Bachchan so we were basically playing his set so I think that was a uh, and that was like a 40 day tour right uh, and we played some we played some insane uh, venues like the NASA Coliseum Coliseum and the yes. the Oracle in Frisco and we played the O2 Arena as well and all sold out gigs i mean obviously with mr b around all these gigs have to be sold out so i think yeah. that was like the biggest biggest bollywood bollywood gig for me because it had right, right. every city they were picking up small people you know like and it was a big production and stuff like that yes. so in terms of like the biggest bollywood gig i think that was that was it yeah but what was your first setup like that you 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 became a part was it kk uh, like you know doing bollywood yeah, stuff yeah kk Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I wouldn't really consider Lucky Ali's music to be Bollywood. No, it's because, not. Because yeah. uh, it was basically that 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 genre of music was not around in the nineties. It it's a new genre. Right. Like it was basically Hind. It was like Hindi pop or Indie pop. Yeah, or Indie whatever. pop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and Lucky's music, if people are familiar with his music, it's he does not do Bollywood. Right. He's got like a handful of Bollywood songs. Basically. Yes. So I would say yeah, KK was uh, because uh, basically a. Yeah, Like the torch was passed on to me from T two because T right. two was uh, KK's drummer for the longest time, and then he got married and he left the country and stuff like that. So I was the immediate easy easy pick for the you know next. Right. And yeah, KK is full out. Like I mean, of course it's not like uh, tabla dholak kind of Bollywood. It's, right. it's we, but but KK has got a lot of you know. Yeah, it's a proper Bollywood band. Hits, so. I think it's that it's that was a, one of yeah. the first. Uh, I think uh, if I would say like Bollywood bands as such, like to start off in that Correct. space, you know. 
uh, from KK Correct. Dushan to you know Shankar Hassan Loy Correct. having that uh, you know uh, not typically the Dholak Dhol space Correct. but you know going into a Correct. band format like you know Correct. so Correct. yeah man cool stuff so uh, let's talk about yeah, your man. session work man uh, 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 when it comes to like uh, obviously you've done a lot of albums with all these bands that you you played with. But when it comes to uh, again come to film work, what what was your uh -huh. uh, session work that you've done till now? I honestly haven't done uh, as much a session work as uh, you and uh, Jay has done, but uh, I've done like we did Laksh, uh, then we did uh, Joom Barabar Joom. Right. Uh, then what else? Can't even remember. Like I've not done too much of like Bollywood session work as such. Like I mean, it's been the few few gigs with Chandanu pretty much. Right. Maybe with Chantanu, right. or if somebody has seen my work and they're like, okay, fine, we want you on this one song. So with people who I know, otherwise some random people just call up out of the blue, and it's actually quite funny. They call you for a rock song, and it's not really rock; it's pop. <laughs> But right. like, you know, I mean, if if it, if, it, if it was me, I would have just programmed drums on it. Right. You know? right. So, right. but it's cool. I mean, I understand. Like different people have different understanding about. Live drum, live drum, live drum record. करते हैं. Correct. So you correct, also faced correct. it. Yes. So to each his own. I mean, there are people who have called me and said, like, hey man, can you come with your? Can you only play kick and snare? And uh, okay, cool, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> It's a little unusual to just get. I'll get my hi hat also. Right. If right. you don't want to use it, that's fine. But you know. Right. <laughs> I still remember so doing yeah, one it's... one session mm. uh, with I think Kurt and a couple of drummers. Uh, I think you were there for that session. Ah uh, yeah, of course we were there. It was, it was a, sort of a film uh, called "Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara," and oh, we, yeah, we played only was, snare drums. It was it was you, Kurt, me, and Debu. Debu, yes. <laughs> Debu, yeah. We were all three. I've got some pictures of that, bro. Oh really? I, I have Please some... share it, man. I would yeah, love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you bounced earlier, but one outside, like one. Uh, Picture we I have with Kurt and Debu, but yes. inside I think I got shots of us play, kind of playing at Purple right. Haze basically. Right. Yeah, that was a fun session. I remember Shank Shankar threw one mad uh, bowly at us in the end, and I was like, <laughs> "What? Can't do this now, bro. Need time to do it." Like, you yeah, know? Right. and I think you you knew it, you knew it, and you kind of simplified it for us. So right. that was fun. Yeah, it was a fun fun session for people to yeah. just know that was song. The song was called Painted Red. So if you ever hear that song. Just oh, check yeah? out the music part, and we played this snare drum piece in the in in the song. In the end, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was like a it's like a shuffle kind of thing, right? It was like yeah, a, yeah. some shuffling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Ah, uh, coming to obviously, you know, we spoke about Coke Why Studio and MTV. Why is Josh Grant like uh, crying out with laughter? What's up, Josh? <laughs> Hi, Josh. Hey. Nice to see you here. Uh, yeah. So, sorry, so tell us studio. about your Coke, Coke Studio experience and MTV Unplug experience. How how's that been for you? They were good. Like I think the first uh, season, which was season two of uh, Coke Studio, uh, I think that was the biggest budget they ever had, <laughs> because ever since post that they were just the sets were getting smaller, the budgets were getting it, smaller. It went down, down, yeah. and then it like faded yeah. out. Happened. <laughs> yeah. From like I remember that first uh, season two, it had like what they had a fifteen. Like Juggy came to me with a fifteen day schedule. Yes. I was like, bro, fifteen days. What do you want me to do for fifteen days, bro? He's like, no, bro, we're gonna shoot everything, and you know, like it's a nine to nine uh, schedule. Mm. I mean, you know it. A lot of uh, most uh, there was a lot of faffing at Whistling Woods where there were only lunch breaks and like chai breaks and this Correct. break and that break. But I mean, but me uh, and uh, Baba, Mr. Rushad, yes. yes, we and and this keyboard player called Aman. So we were yeah. the first three guys who would land up there earlier. Everybody else would come much later. So we would just jam, man. We would just jam our asses off. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, of course, uh, Clinton's a great. I mean, he's a great uh, composer, and I love I love his stuff. And I think it's a mutual respect we both have. He knows, uh, you know, what I'm good at, and and uh, it was like it was a lot of it was a lot of freedom to do stuff. And he always. And knew what he wanted to do. Right. At the same time, he would keep things open and say, "Okay, fine. This is like the Madari groove. That's 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 his groove. Like a lot of people come to me and say, 'Hey, how do you get that groove?'" He yeah, I think someone in the groove. chat asked. I think Sanket asked you about how did you work out that groove. Oh, uh, it Clinton already had it programmed, so I just had to fit into it, and we just had a bunch of conversation of how we should go about it. And uh, I think he was pretty clear that he wanted it to be the way he wanted it to be. So uh, I just basically dug in and. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I I just kind of played that groove and made it my own, like you know. So, right. uh, right. 
so like i said he was pretty organized he knew what he wanted like even me tomorrow if i have if i say i want you to play a guru i'll have a i'll kind of have a reference for you to yes. you know uh, because it's easier to understand like that True. you know and uh, of course like there were some amazing songs like uh, there was this one song called uh, chat de with master salim yes uh, which is my which is my my personal favorite like it was right. really cool and master salim's like Master Salim is a crazy, crazy singer. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. He, you talk about chops, like he's got some serious chops. Right, right. So, and it was a really nice, uh, very kind of uh, nice vibe song. Like, I mean, and we had a lot of fun. Like, I mean, we used to bump into one another. There, yes. There was Gino. There was Gino somewhere else. Right. You know, like, and we'd all like just meet for this big buffet of such a like how <laughs> or say say chow. And you know, you know, those True. whistling wood sessions were amazing, man. Fifteen right. days over there was like nuts. Right. So it was. I quite enjoy. Uh, after a while, I started getting used to it. I quite in, started enjoying the controlled environment thing, because for for the longest time I was not with in years. Right. But uh, then after a while, I kind of got with it. Uh, but it's been fun, man. Even the unplugs and all have been like super fun. Like now, once you start doing it, I mean, it's kind of weird. I'm sure you also went through it because when you're playing, it's fine. But then there are these big cameras zooming into your face and stuff like that. You know, it's all like, okay, silence. Spot, <laughs> Dada. All that, you know, you know, you know why, bro? And yeah. like, if you mess up, it's like camera on you, basically, you know. Okay. But I, I think you just have to get used fine. to it. I think for me, also, exactly. I've okay. done so much of reality shows before I actually started doing Coke Studio and MTV Unplugged. I was pretty used to the whole format of used the to. camera and the whole vibe that goes around a reality show. So it really helped me yeah. to. pretty much go pretty easy yeah. on this one yeah you just got to do more of it i remember some other musicians who were like just who getting like amazingly like they getting so nervous and scared i was like dude chill man it's it's, it's all good if you have a problem shut your eyes and play don't look at the camera you know just just get into your own zone basically yeah but yeah it was fun i mean we had a lot of fun doing doing these things it was amazing correct uh So, just talking about the overall drumming scene, uh, Lindsay. What do you think of, of? You know, obviously, you've seen the '90s, you've seen the early 2000s, and now we're in 2020. What is the difference in the drumming scene that you feel is happening now? And uh, you know, how easy is now, uh, you know, for drummers to get uh, education when it comes to understanding these? You know, whether it's through Drumio, whether it's through YouTube. Let's just talk about the whole drumming scene uh, uh, in the last 30 years. I think right now it's amazing, man. I mean, like, like I said, like if uh, uh, back in the day, just to get your hands on like an instructional video or something was extremely difficult. I remember there was a place in Delhi that had these pyramid uh, VHS cassettes. Yes, so that was the only. Paliga was, the, was, that? was the only. Exactly, that was the only way where you could get your hands on something like that. And then, of course, uh, you know the. I'm sure all of us have seen that the Buddy Rich, uh, the amazing Buddy Rich gig with like Vinny and Dave and yes. and uh, Dennis Chambers and I mean so slowly these things started like filtering it but filtering in but unless somebody got it from out there was no like direct access to it like how we have right. YouTube right now even the concept of like backline uh, the concept of drum recordings like. a drum session back in the day was like a two day process man like you would take your drum kit go there to the studio and you just prayed that the sound engineer has recorded drums before <laughs> you know, because if he didn't because if he didn't bro he'd be shoving a sm58 into your kick drum True. you know True. it would just and like even we like i mean i didn't know i was not into production i was like you know we just learning so you have no concept so all these things like backline uh like a drum session of course if you had shantanu one of these guys you were sorted but right. you know if you had an engineer who has they have no clue of how to record drums man i mean imagine yes. shoving a 58 so it was like a very big task like you know now of course like you can just like you put a kit anywhere and just set up a bunch of microphones and boom like you know you can you know i mean you we are we've learned also like we've right. learned how to you know we uh, learned the art traveling way. like it was worth it for sure it was worth it absolutely then talking about backline i remember me and t2 kind of uh, we went for a lucky ali gig no we went for a groove sapa gig to like darjeeling or sikkim or somewhere right and uh, the rest of the band came back me and t2 went trekking and stuff like that so when we had to come back basically it was his entire percussion rig and my entire drum kit oh god we go to the counter and this is the first time i've ever been pro- you know like somebody has given me a, like an invoice of 30 40000 i was like what <laughs> excess baggage i was like what 
like yeah so you know i mean like you, you can't you can't do this we can't pay right. 30 40000 bucks for excess baggage always but now the backline like i'm sure you will agree i mean i, I love playing dw you're a pole guy i mean i find dw's uh, in most metros like uh, they have in in gujarat they have in yes. in chennai they have in bangalore they have bombay have so that's amazing like i always carry my skb with my symbols but a lot of times i don't even use them because the guys acha linse aa rahe acha theek theek hai uske uske liye hi chahiye wo chahiye is there sorted like so i mean i just take my bag and then i just put it back in the car <laughs> right, right right so so i think they've really uh, come a long long way i think they've come a really long way now and youtube and all has made like dramio has made your life like sorted dude right. like you're completely sorted you know like like you don't like i know a lot of people like you don't even need to go to you don't even need to like do books you can just everything is on a screen you know right, right. any kind of anything you want any lick you want any fill you want if you know the right thing you just type it in and you'll get it like but otherwise there was no such way it was going the hard way right put the cassette inside and rewind 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 until you get it basically but don't you think that so, was also like a, an advantage for us because we didn't have the video content at all even when i started with you know kind of uh, uh, getting uh, with like you know with ranjit barod when i started learning from him there were only cds and we used to only listen to audio which was listen. i feel that uh, you know we were really listening very well when it came to what the drama was doing while Correct. today that focus is is gone a little to that video part and acha this chop and that chop uh, you know yeah. what i'm saying sure, yeah but that is something which is yeah, changed yeah possibly i mean it's it's a lot easier now as in like uh, and hence there's so much of stuff like anybody can actually put out anything right you know uh, it it kind of gives you that confidence ki like acha now this is how it's done i also can do it right but i mean like practice i mean is something you cannot escape you've got to like i mean you have to sit down and like you know hone your skills and i mean unless you're like a prodigy and you're completely gifted like right, right i mean i remember i remember talking about this audio thing when i actually started i started with a really funny technique i used to play the ride and i thought the hi hats only for like counting or something <laughs> <laughs> you know and well, then i actually saw i actually saw a drummer playing and i was like dude he's playing like this yeah? right. he's not playing like this and like that you know so i had to change my entire technique and of course yeah. even talking about ranjit ranjit was like a complete eye opener for me like when i saw ranjit playing i was like Uh, Ranjit's got this very uh, standard Ranjit thing that he when he goes like chick 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 with his hi hats, he's yes. got these really yeah. badass fusion kind of chops. Yes. I mean grooves on the right, and his hats are just going chick 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 chick. I remember we had gone for like a a jazz festival to Manori, and I walk into this jazz festival and I just see Ranjit's hi hats going chick 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 chick. chick. <laughs> like, wow, what is this guy, dude? Right. And this was actually it was it was basically Ranjit, Carl, Louis. and uh, roy venkat raman right, right so i mean so that was amazing i mean like i think ranjit for me is like uh, he was one guy who and of course before i when i met din din also used to play with ranjit and yes. they had put out a, an, an album called g viz which was almost like the indian chikore and i was like what this is you guys playing shit mad it's quite crazy right. yeah so ranjit always ranjit always been a huge influence like i mean he's ranjit We love you, man. I'm sure all yeah. of us love you. So, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Uh, talking about gear, man. So, are you like a, a little thing about buying a lot of gear when it comes to snare drums? And you know, if you can talk about the, your DW kit and uh, heads and stuff that you use. Uh, so the DW kit is a collector series which I got in like 2008. This was on that big unforgettable tour because I yes. knew that uh, I am going to pick up a DW this time. I was well funded with. with whatever i needed to be and uh, i actually i was in i was in new york for almost two weeks so i i got a chance to actually check it out at guitar center and right. samash and eventually both of them gave me a good deal as well yeah. uh snare drums i have uh, this friend of mine t2 my he's like my brother he actually gifted me an amazing uh, uh tama snare drum what, what is it the uh, shit I, i forget the star classic It's or like, like a, the bubenga Yeah, it's the Bubenga. Basically, yeah. it's the mixture of those three. Right. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing snare drum. Apart from that, I have uh, I have two PDPs which I picked up. Uh, one in New Zealand, which is a really big one. I think it's a six inch, six or seven. I think. Six point five. Yeah, it could be seven because it's a big right. guy. Right. Uh, then 
the the I have another PDP which I used for Coke Studio all those three sessions. Yeah. Uh, all those three seasons. I mean, all those two seasons, Madari and stuff like that. It's right. another PDP, but that's a regular size. Okay. Uh, then I have a Pearl uh, Piccolo, uh, and then I have another a Yamaha, which is like a five by ten, which is great for drum and bass and hip hop. Right. Yeah, man, snare drums can go on and on. Like, <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, I don't have a, a, a DW snare drum because they are priced at a very high range. Right. They start only at like thousand dollars, so I've not been able to get the right one. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure it'll come soon. <laughs> right. Is DW is, is so, also uh, an endorsement that you have, or it's something that you just prefer from day one? Is DW sorry? Do you have an endorsement with DW, or it's it's something no, that you prefer no. from day one? It's just something I. Uh, it's just the sound that I've always kind of liked. Right. Like I, before this, I had a Pearl. I had right. the Pearl Export series for the longest time. Right. Uh, before that, obviously, I had a Gladnik, and uh, but I don't know. There's something about DW that kind of like Zildjian that I had a soft corner for, you know. Yes. And I remember going to LA the first time and seeing these DW drum kits. I was like, what the hell are this, man? What is this? Like, I mean, because right. they also boast about some amazing lacquer and, you know, they have all these rainforest finish and, and this drum kit that I saw the first time was for like seven and a half thousand dollars, dude. Wow. I mean, of course, I mean, that's not my, I paid like about, I think I paid three thousand dollars for mine. Right. So, but yeah, I've always had a soft corn for DW as well. Like, I, I think it's, even Pearl, like, I think each one of these kits have their own characteristics, yes. you know, and it's a very personal choice. Like, the DW Toms are like, I think I find them very resonant, which are very my kind of sound. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't have a, a endorsement yet. Right. I don't know, I mean. Because there, I, I, I remember something. when it, uh, you know, when Sing Instrument got the, the deal of DW, mm -hmm. uh, they had approached yeah. me for, you know, the kit. And yeah, yeah. for me, it was just to be real because I knew that I would not get DW on get. the road that much. Uh, and that yeah. was the only reason I kind of went to Pearl because I, I knew that Pearl and Tama was pretty easy to achieve yeah. you know, when it come, came to backline back then, at least in 2010, 2011. And Sorry. that's why I kind of went from DW to, uh, to Pearl yeah. during that time. Yeah. No, but now, sir, I mean, having said that, like all these people are all like buying like DWs and it's a part of their backline, which is great. Right, right, right. right. So it's amazing to like, uh, you know, get all these kits and some of these guys are actually tell me, sir, aapke liye ye mein leke aaya. And that's amazing. Like, you know, it's like, it's great. I mean, for them also, it's like, you know, I mean, they, uh, there are various musicians, it's backline. They have to just provide, right, with, provide right. people, whatever they, whatever people ask for. So it's cool. Right. But I think it's also when it comes to brand, because <laughs> Rahul, I, Rahul I somehow... on drums is saying Gladnik. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, man. Gladnik. Right. I just feel that when it comes to the brand part of it, I just uh, wish that DW was also like kind of a little involved with India, which I somehow didn't feel it back then, you know. And Bro, uh, see, that's uh, why I've not I've not answered your question because I have right. sent emails to the people people concerned, right? Uh, because a lot of people have said, man, you are like probably one of the only people who play that's DW what? in India. I have sent emails to these people saying like, here I am. This is what I do. If this, I would love to, uh, you know, help you in terms of branding right. and stuff like that. No reply. So I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I love DW, but I can't right. beg you to, you know, like true. That's respond true. to that's me. True. Like, that's true. yeah. So that's fine. I mean, I have my own DW. I mean, that's fine. That's, <laughs> so, that works. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so let's say what's happening now. Future projects. I know the, you know, the gig scene is pretty much on uh, on standby now for the next at least. On six, hold. Eight, uh, actually, uh, we did we did a kind of a test run like with uh, like a, uh, I think. Was it last week? We did like a test run for one of these virtual kind of gigs. Obviously, it's not going to be the same. Right. But uh, we kind of did like a test run with KK uh, on a virtual platform. Uh, I don't think anybody knows when gigs are actually going to start. Right. Uh, but uh, I mean, if there are no like, at least this is this is the new normal. So, right. have you done any of these virtual gigs yet? So yeah, I'm actually working on a on a on a uh, platform which basically allows me to play from my from my house. So I can actually jam mm. with you, and we can actually mm. be without latency on the on the same okay. page. You know, so I'm kind of working okay. on that app, which kind of will be hopefully soon available to everybody in the circuit. But it's a little mm. too early in the day to talk about it. But that's something that I'm yeah. working on with this new setup called Live and In Sync. So that's happening. Oh nice. Okay. It's fun, okay. but obviously, as you said, it's nowhere close to 
uh, the live scene. Yeah, man. With with this with this situation, nobody knows uh, when things are going to start, and of right. course, we in the entertainment industry are going to be. First of all, living in Bombay, and then in the enter- entertainment industry, it's gonna we're gonna be the last to open up. So I think uh, right. right now it's a time to kind of uh, it's a time to reinvent and to be resilient and to do everything that you wanted to do when you said like, "Oh, I need to do it." You right. know, what I mean, and it would just be there, you know, uh, because we'd be traveling so much, and so that's why, man. Just I mean, it's we have we have really no choice but to be positive right. and. Uh, just focus on things that kind of you know uh you know get you going like that's why i've resorted to like some photography and you know whatever like keep it going like i mean because you're going to sit down there True. and do nothing and, and this is a great time for practice like now you want to play go play man go play as of play the whole day you know right right so right. so it's yeah it's a, but these are really very strange times like i think it's not something that the human that humans are Would have ever you know Ever expected? It's a time right. for adaptation, basically, right now. True, true, true. It's true. So, Linsa, I think we've got about four minutes. I think I, I didn't realize actually it's been a, it's almost an hour. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, uh, what uh, music with Tarsa Mittal? What yeah, no, Tarsa that's Mittal? something that I've been doing with that particular. Ah, okay, uh, okay. Group. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, if anybody, if there are any, if there are any questions directed to me, I could uh, answer them if they need to. Yeah, I'm just gonna check that out. Uh, I think there was one about the Madari group that you already answered about it, uh, yeah. and then it's yeah. So uh, one final message, if you want to give it, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, upcoming drummers in the scene out here. A uh, lot of people who've come from different cities and kind of trying to survive in Mumbai right now. You've seen the the last 25 years in the business. Uh, something that you want to give that message to how to kind of work out and how to be Uh, a versatile drama where you, you can be called for anything you know uh, any genre and you should be ready for it so what is your your take well i mean i'm not going to give you like a full full gyan but like there's no escaping practicing excuse me i mean right now i don't get a chance to practice that much but like i said back in the day my schedule was from like pretty much the whole day uh listening is very important like uh, i know a lot of people who kind of confine themselves to like very just particular genres and say man i only listen to rock music i can't take that other kind of music well you would learn a lot from stuff that you don't like right. you know like uh, uh and that's 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 a great thing like so like listening to music especially i mean if you want to be a sessions musician or, or just you want to understand music like it's very important that you listen to all different kinds of styles whether it's right. rock jazz fusion anything like you know i mean even like i said like when i was younger i mean i'm not so much into into fusion but i kind of did the education when i had to like i would go literally and just sit down like a student and watch tabla players playing it was just amazing like you know right. so you understand you understand where it's coming from tomorrow if somebody talks about something like that you'll understand what they're saying so in terms of your you have to have a big vocabulary like you know right. somebody say hey man do this you'll be like what is that like you know like you need to know about it so practice listen to like lots of music listen to just anything and everything uh i think yeah that's that's uh, i mean see for us we have a different journey because both of us are from bombay i know it's a lot harder for a lot of people who come from out of bombay because when you are in bombay the first thing that you hit with is rent yes you know how are you going to survive so that now you have to figure out whether you get a different job and pays pays your rent because it's not like you're going to come to bombay and you're going to get a call for it in, immediately even yeah. for us it took us a while but like i mean the scene back then in nine, in the in the mid 90s there was such a small scene there were only so many people yes you know to who would get that call yes and you could say those were the those were the so called session musicians then right but now there's like Everyone. now there's like a million people you know there's like a million right. people and and there's a lot of talent so don't get disheartened just i mean just focus on like why you've come here and to do what right make it happen like i'm not saying it's going to be easy so you have to work you got to work and make it happen basically good luck cool. to all of you all man i mean hopefully if this will kind of this this weird z, this weird zone will pass and right. hopefully things will come back to normal amazing okay i think we've got 30 seconds so uh, thank you so much cool. everyone for joining in and i yeah I man thank you guys i really love this session and thank you linse for joining on ziljin india and good i i really see you man. 
see you at the airport soon. <laughs> we, should, we, can, we can do this more often. It's, it seems like fun and for longer route. Yes, yes. And today sure. the connection is amazing. I can it's see been you. great. Not, it's been not... great. <laughs> yeah. Take care, brother. Thank you so cool. much. You see too, you man. Take care of yourself. Yeah. See you Bye. Everyone. Thank you for joining in. Bye. Bye, guys.